ever find yourself bored shitless with linear gameplay? Are you fed up with games that hold your hand and treat you like a big Jesse biscuit? Well, you're in luck, because this game is a wee cracker. Don't Starve is a roguelike RPG where the goal is simply to survive for as long as you can. That title, by the way, is also all of the instructions. You're plonked in the wilderness and basically left to your own devices, so explore, examine objects and gather resources. I'll be honest, I spent my first go running after rabbits like a dafty. The game features a day and night cycle, so you'd better be ready for sundown, for the night is dark and full of terrors. The game's interface also has an inventory bar, crafting menu and three gauges to track your character's health, hunger and sanity. You'll have to pay attention to the effects the environment has on each of these. Once you've found some basic materials, such as twigs and flint, you'll be able to make some simple tools, like axes and traps. The fun really starts when you collect enough resources to build a science machine and start experimenting with weapons, alchemy engines and, best of all, fancy hats. Eventually you'll find your stride and stockpile some scran, but don't think the game's going to let you off that easy. Winter kicks in at around day 20, which can be hell for the unprepared. You'll take freezing damage if you stray too long from the campfire, which you'll have to do eventually in order to gather supplies. Good luck with that, by the way, as there ain't nothing growing vegetable-wise, plus you risk encountering hostile species such as deer clops, snow wolves and chukta walruses. Don't Starve's main protagonist is Wilson, gentleman scientist, with the ability to grow, and I quote, a magnificent beard. Trust me, it truly is breathtaking. Once you've played a few games, you'll unlock other characters, all with their own quirks and special abilities. There's Wolfgang the Strongman, Wickerbottom the Librarian, Woody the Lumberjack, and WX78 the Robot. My favourite is Willow the Pyromaniac, who starts the game with her lucky lighter. It's a nice wee bit of kit and comes in dead handy. Just remember to keep her sane or else she'll start randomly setting fires. In addition to sandbox mode, there's also adventure mode, but you'll have to find it first. Upon entering, you'll be stripped of your inventory and left to progress through five stages, each one set in a harsh environment. It's a bit like getting lost in Glasgow at four in the morning. Don't be put off though, as soon as you die you'll be sent back to the main game with your gear intact. You can still re-enter the door if you fancy another go. Adventure mode also features two unlockable characters. Wes the Mime and the villain Maxwell. Now, I think it's time we had a little talk about permadeath, which is used in this game. To say that opinions are divided on the subject is putting it mildly. Some see it as a return to form, you know, lose and you're humped, arcade style. Game over, you suck, back to the start. I have to admit, I kind of miss that. When you're constantly reloading from checkpoints, death just doesn't feel like death. If anything, it's a minor inconvenience. Where's the sense of loss and failure to make you try harder? On the other hand, maybe permadeath is a cheap tactic offering nothing except bragging rights for wee fannies who want to prove their hardcore. But when debating the merits of gaming devices, shouldn't it be about the context? I mean, permadeath generally won't work in a complex narrative like Bioshock Infinite. Imagine getting killed in the airship battle and having to start all over again. No! Just no! But for indie games such as FTL, permadeath means there's something more at stake. Your entire crew could be wiped out any moment, and this heightens the thrill. Mastering the game isn't about progressing from A to B, it's about honing skills and developing tactics till you're slick enough to handle whatever the game throws at you. Don't Starve definitely falls into the latter category, but there's something else going on too. The theme of the game is death. Unflinching, uncompromising death. You cheat the inevitable for as long as you want, but make no mistake, you are going to die. You just don't know when, or how. Plus, the longer you do survive, the more innocent creatures you'll have to murder. And yes, that is the word they use for the action that turns rabbits into stew. 
I didn't even know bunnies could scream. Consider also the game's tone and style. The music sounds like a haunted carnival, and the artwork reminds me of Tim Burton before he started phoning it in. There's a high score table called the Morgue, which records every game you've played, including number of days survived and eventual cause of demise. How delightfully grim! And if the game's still not morbid enough for you, try playing as Wendy. She has a seriously depressing inner monologue, plus the ability to summon her dead sister Abigail with a blood sacrifice. Seriously, why are twin girls so creepy? My point is that, in Don't Starve, permadeath works on a conceptual level, because death is what the game is all about. Your character's life hangs by a thread, and you never forget that. The idea is woven not just into the plot and the aesthetics, but right down into the game's mechanics. I think that's pretty clever. All in all, Don't Starve is a smashing wee game with loads to do and see. Befriend some pigs, hunt the elusive coelephant, go grave robbing, or just discover all the many ways you can be horribly killed. So far, starvation hasn't come up in mine, so I might as well call the game Don't Go Nuts, Don't Freeze, or Don't Die in a Fire. Although the title did prove ironic in another way, because I lost track of time when I was playing and burnt my dinner. How's that for an endorsement? Anyway, Don't Starve. Great game, great advice in general. It's available on Steam and PS4 from Cly... 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 I don't know, these guys. Check it out and may the odds be ever in your favour.